Hi everyone and welcome to Rainy Day Makers. This is where we share what we have learned being makers. If you like what you see, please click on the YouTube subscribe button and like this video so that we can make more to share with you. This is brought to you today by Sharon from Rainy Day Makers. I'm Sharon. I am part of a duo on this channel. My friend Tammy is also a part of Rainy Day Makers and you will see her videos on this channel as well. Make sure you look up her videos and give them a like and tell her hi in the comments. I'm sure she would love it. What I am making today is an easy garland using some paper punched circles and straight stitching um, on your sewing machine to create the garland. All right. Um, you can also use glue and thread or a string to create this garland, but today we will show you how to sew them together to make long or short garland that you can use for a swag for decoration, or you can make them longer and hang in a doorway, or just make one and use it as an ornament. Um, you could also make these with a much smaller circle um, and use them as a garland for your tree. Easter tree, Christmas tree, Halloween tree. Those are becoming popular um, more so every day. Um, so for this one, um, let me tell you what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a circle punch. Mine is a two inch circle punch by Fiskars. I've had it for quite some time. Um, you will need some double-sided printed paper. That means that it is printed on both sides, right? Um, now, if you don't mind having one side white, you can use single-sided printed paper. Um, whatever works best for you. I am using cardstock weight paper for this project. So this is um, pretty sturdy right? And I'm also using a regular sewing machine and a straight stitch on that sewing machine with a longer stitch length. On my machine, it's like three and a half to four stitch length. I'm using a light colored universal thread to sew them together. You can use a poly, you can use a cotton, um, whatever you have on hand um, that's not, you know, super thick. So, and a number 12 needle, um, you do not wanna use a ballpoint needle. That's the only recommendation I have there. Um, if you have a 10 on hand, use a 10. If you have a 12, a 14, um, you don't, probably don't wanna get much bigger than a 14. Um, because when you sew these together, your needle will punch holes in the paper. So the smaller your needle, the less the hole will show. And you can see that on the middle of this. So I don't know if you can see that. Let me try to bring it in and see if you can see that, right? So that stitch right there, I think that's a three and a half. Um, you don't want it too close together, that stitch, because you'll perforate the paper and it'll just tear. So you want a longer stitch length. Um, I have chose a double-sided paper with a floral print. Um, this is from Park Lane. It is the Southern Charm Paper Packet. Um, and that is where this one and this one come from. This one is from a different paper packet. Um, so you choose the papers you have on hand or if you want to um, get some double-sided paper, we all love to shop sometimes. So feel free to do that. Or, you know, just use what you have on hand. You don't have to use the same paper throughout. You can vary it. Maybe it's a good way to use up some of your scraps of paper. Um, and you don't have to use a two, in it, two inch punch. You can use a one inch punch or a four inch punch um, or a three inch punch, whatever you have on hand. Or if you don't want to invest in punches and you don't have any punches, um, you can use your Cricut or your Silhouette or you can just draw a circle on paper and cut them out. Um, sometimes that can be a very zen moment to just cut out circles. So I've done that before too. Just, you know, um, sit, you know, watch TV or, you know, watch Netflix or whatever it is and um, cut out your circles or just punch them out. Um, if you have a lot of circles to make, I would recommend a punch or, or some sort of machine like a Cricut um, or a um, Silhouette. So with that said, um, I have made a short gar garland for you to see the finished item. This is what I've showed you there. And you can see that it has different sides. Um, and it, it's kind of a fun little garland to play with. And it, it will spin around. Let me see if I can make it spin a little bit for you. 
if I hold it too tight, it won't, but I don't know if you can see that. The thread is fine enough that it'll spin on its own, wind up, and then spin back the other way. Um, I don't find it does that as well with string because um, it's just a little thicker. I mean, it can. It's just a little bit thicker. It just looks different. All right, with that said, um, you've got all your supplies in hand. Um, so the next step is let's take it to the sewing machine and sew these circles together. All right, we've got our sewing machine out. We're ready to go. Um, we're ready to sew these circles. And one of the first things we're going to do is, and I've already got one set of circles underneath the presser foot, but we're going to take a circle and we're going to fold it in half, right? So we're just going to fold that circle right in half. You can use your nails or if you have a bone folder, you can use that. I have one here. Um, so you're just basically going to just do this kind of thing to get a nice crease in it, all right? So you can see the crease when you open it up, right? And you're just gonna put another circle right underneath that circle, right? So they're gonna match up like this. And what this crease will do for you is it'll allow you to have a, a straight line to sew on. So it's your guide as you put these under the needle, this, this crease right here on top will be your guide. So let's, let's sew the first one and we'll see how that goes. All right, so let's go. I hope my machine doesn't act up today. It already is kind of acting up a little bit, but let me hold this down. It's just being, ah, uh, there we go. That first one can be a little bit finicky to get through because of the long tail. Um, if you can stop with your needle down, that's a great way to go. Um, but that long tail can kind of make it difficult. Leave a little gap. Um, I don't know if you can see this here, but I've got this. Um, the needle's still in the circle, just at the very end of it. And I'm gonna start feeding through the next circle. And what that's gonna do for me is I'm gonna sew right down that line, okay? And then I can put my needle down if it wants to go down. Sometimes it tells me, no, I don't want to. And I'm gonna do the next one, right? So I'm gonna fold it in half for that top one. You can do these ahead of time if you want. I'm gonna show you a few of these um, so that you can see how that's done, right? And this time I'll just sew two of these together. Same print, and that way you'll be able to see how they alternate. I'm gonna put them under my presser foot and I'm gonna sew right down that line, right? And if you can, if your needle will stay in the down position, um, do that and leave it in the down position. Get your next one, right? So I've got another one. I'm only going to do maybe one more. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Use my bone folder. And just get a crisp edge on that so that I can see it really well when I put it through the sewing machine. And then see, I'm putting one right behind it. Right? Just like that. Okay. And I can see that line really clear. And then I'm gonna put it back under the sewing machine, under the presser foot, and I'm gonna sew right down that line. Keep my fingers out of the way, right? Okay, I think that's enough. You see the thing, you are just continue to assembly line sew these. Um, and then when you get to the end, um, raise your presser foot, pull off a goodly amount of the thread through the back. I have an automatic cutter on the side of mine. So you can see I've got this thread at the end and then I have this thread at the beginning, right? So um, we wanna make sure that we have some, cause this is your swag. It's gonna be your swag and I'll show you this a little bit better. Let's get the sewing machine put away and uh, then we will um, come back. All right, here we are back from the sewing machine. We've got our four circles with two layers sewn together. So our next step will be to open these up. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold this back 
and then we're going to fold the other side back and this is what how it's going to work it's going to look a little bit like this on the top and we're going to do that with each one we're just going to fold it back go to the other side fold that one back till you get this shape and you're just going to do this and repeat it for every single one that you've made on your string or on your thread so we're going to pull that one back open it back up right so here we go we'll do the fourth one and you should get a little bit of resistance when you go to fold it back and and then you can just play with it to get it exactly where you want it will stick i have the other one um this one i've had made for a while and um it really does stay pretty well with the court card stock easy for me to say right so um the next thing you're going to do is you're just going to form a little loop and tie this so that you have a loop to hang it from right and um, whatever excess you have here you can definitely trim that off grab my giant scissors and um let me get that thread off there all right so you've got that little little loop you can see that loop here um, and that'll allow you to hang this up from wherever you want to hang it up at. And then um, if you want to swag it, make a loop at the other end as well. And um, you can see the loop I've made here. It really is just doubling over the thread and doing a, a loop knot on there. So um, that is how you make a swag of these little circles. Use up your scraps. Um, use up some of your cardstock paper, right? Oops and have yourself a cute little garland that really will enhance your space if you just wanna hang it in your craft room, whatever you want to do with it. Um, and you can definitely hang it anywhere. It, they're just really, really cute. All right, so with that said, um, if you've enjoyed this video, please click on the subscribe button below on YouTube and click the thumbs up. Um, Rainy Day Makers would also love to see you on our Facebook page at Rainy Day Maker Makes. See you next time. Have a great day, everybody.